Hi, I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm the host of Best of Us Investors. We're a tribe of uh, investors who basically want to make good investment decisions. Uh, we want to learn how to keep more of what we keep, make by understanding our tax code. And our ultimate goal is to build family wealth. I've noticed some talk uh, about is it time to get out of Tesla and is there in fact a short squeeze being placed on Tesla and we all know what a short squeeze can do we've seen it in the past so there's some turmoil around Tesla I need to start by saying Tesla is one of my top two holdings I own between 115,000 and 116,000 of Google and Tesla and they're my two largest holdings um, I'm a believer in Tesla, not as a car company, but more as a technology company. But I think it deserves some attention at this point as to is it a, a potential short squeeze and is it time to back out and uh, let things kind of take care of themselves. So that's what I want to talk about today and uh, give you my feelings on it. I am a retired financial advisor. I've been in this business for quite a long time and I've experienced these things before. And so uh, I, I, feel, uh, I feel compelled to share my knowledge with you. So we'll get to it here in a second. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Nita and I are going on a road trip for about a week and a half, and I'm going to be doing all of my work with my laptop. And I was concerned uh, about cybersecurity, particularly in light of what I saw happen with the Colonial Pipeline. Um, I know I'm vulnerable, so as I'm using my uh, laptop in public places, the people in there and wherever will have access to my computer and uh, they can access my brokerage account and my bank account. So I needed a VPN and, and I've, uh, I've signed up for Surfshark. If you do any work with your phone or with your, your a laptop outside of your home, I think this is something you need to look into. I work to deal with them so that you get a substantial discount and then on top of that you get some months free. It's in the, it's in the uh, description here. I, I just think it's, it's wise for those of us who uh, are involved in investing to have access to this. It's not difficult. I installed it on my laptop and we're good to go. So let's get back to Tesla. So as I said, I've been seeing a lot of talk about um, shorting Tesla and that it's overvalued. And, and I think it is, is as a car company, because there's not a lot of profit in making cars and the amount of competition for making electric vehicles is growing on a daily basis. Everybody seems to be getting into it. And even the giants, the, the Volkswagens and the General Motors and Fords have woken up to it. And I mean that they are so far behind. Uh, it's it's kind of ridiculous. They they're in the seat of Sears and Roebuck and Kmart um, as as Amazon is eating their lunch, but they're trying to catch up. <clears throat> My point is though, I don't see Tesla as a ordinary automobile company. I see them as a technology company. I recognize that they have been gathering data for the last what 10 years of the the roads that uh, their their fleet runs down and they're they're putting artificial intelligence to it to help cars make better driving decisions eliminating the human being and that's where i think the the real value in tesla lies is that it is going to be the autonomous automobile of choice and it's whether whether or not we own it or a fleet owns it such as uber or lyft and they bring them to our door is really irrelevant i think the the reality is that in the future we won't be in love with our automobiles like we have been in the past and we'll recognize they are not a good investment and I'll let somebody else maintain them and insure them and, and take care of them. So I think 
Tesla is in fact a autonomous automobile investment for me. And it's a long-term investment. I, I basically look at the market as a long-term investment. So let's address this. I want to I want to show you a graph of the short interest in Tesla over the last years. And you can see it, it's it's almost at an all-time low. So this CNBC report that I just recently saw that some major investor who uh, shorted uh, the subprime crisis um, is, is shorting Tesla. Okay, that's his right. And he may do it on a short-term basis and make some money, but I don't think it's, it's a good investment or a, a good investment decision. And then I wanted to show you um, a, a graph of, in order to have a successful um, short, you have to have a, 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 it's best if it works when, the company is buying back shares. So in fact, there are fewer and fewer shares out there. So your short becomes a larger and larger portion of the actual shares in existence. But the opposite's happening with Tesla. Look at this chart here as the number of outstanding shares of Tesla. Tesla each year is increasing their number of shares out, which then means if I'm short uh, 50,000 shares and they're increasing the number of shares, the percentage of shares that I own of the uh, total existing shares gets smaller and smaller. So it's it's kind of a counterintuitive to at this point say, I'm going in to short Tesla and because of that, I will put a squeeze on them. It, it, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. Now, there are smarter people than me out there, but this doesn't seem to be working. So then what I wanted to do was look at a graph and say, well, I understand that Tesla is now in a position where it has dropped substantially. It was up close to $900 a share, and now it's down below $600 a share. In my math, in my head, that math is about a 33% drop. So I wanted to look at a chart and say, okay, has this ever happened again? And here on this chart, you can see, yeah, it has. And, and look at the pattern. The pattern is that it drops it trades sideways, and then it shoots up and gets its largest uh, gain. It has dropped, as you can see in the past, even more dramatically than it has now. And these are that is because, why is this? Well, that's because this is new kind of investing. We don't if you look back, I've been around for 76 years and 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 the the we we used to talk about Moore's law that the power of the chip the Intel chip when Intel was significant um, was increasing every eighteen months and the CEO of Intel was at that time the um, guy by the name of Moore's and so they coined the Moore's law that the power of computing will increase double every 18 months. Well, the fact is it's increasing even more rapidly than that. And the as that happens, the, the velocity of change is increasing as well. I did a video earlier this week on Back to the Future and how in 1985 they made that movie. And to give a significant visual change. They went from 85 to 55. Well, in today's world, you can, you'll be able to go from um, 2024 to 2021 and see a significant change. Our highways are going to have substantial more electric vehicles. Our medical system is going to dramatically change as a result of the coronavirus. We're going to see more and more 3D printing. Uh, our clothes are going to be custom made for us. Heck, I've seen a video where they're 3D printing a house as the as the demographics, the baby boomers, 79 million of us move from 
for, uh, I think the ages are now 55 to 75. As we age, the demographic, the real estate industry is going to change dramatic. That's one of the reasons there's so such a shortage of homes right now. So coming back to Tesla, Tesla is the, the driving edge of the electric vehicle market. It, it's drawing a lot of attention because it isn't what we're accustomed to. But more importantly than that, we're, yeah, electric vehicles are a fact. They, the, the General Motors has said they won't be making internal combustion engines in, in uh, 20 uh, th- uh, 35. I wouldn't be at all surprised if they weren't making any combustion, any kind of engines in 2035. But the reality is the change is coming so fast um, that autonomous vehicles are, are, are a fact. You've got to know that's going to happen. When they become autonomous and when my generation moves on, the generation that fell in love with the automobile, put two cars in every garage and and would go down in October when the new models came out and peer through the fences to see what the new model... That don't happen anymore. The millennials don't love their cars like we did. Um... The millennials aren't going to spend a half a million dollars on a on an electric. Uh, what did I see just today? A Tesla? No, not Tesla, but a Lamborghini. They aren't going to do that. My generation's going to do that, and we're going to die. So recognize Tesla. To my and that's all this is my opinion. To that, Tesla's going to stay one of my top two holdings. Uh, I am a long-term investor, and to me, long-term is five years. Um, and I think I'm positioned to make a buttload of money as the rest of the world wakes up to the world is changing, and it's not going to be done. What is it I read that 50% of the S&P 500 companies won't be in the S&P 500 in four years. They're, they're, they're going to be antiquated. They're going to be replaced. And the replacement's coming like a bat out of hell. I think that was a meatloaf song, if I recollect. Yeah, meatloaf saying bat out of hell. Okay, that's my take on Tesla. If you got it, hold it. If you don't have it, it's a buy-in opportunity. It really is. I'm expecting right after the 1st of June, a big influx of cash because I'm selling a house that I'm building. Um, And Tesla's going to get some of it, particularly if it's still under $600. All right. Talk to you again tomorrow.